any farther, you have to have the conversation with him as far as letting him know that, hey, you know, I have a girlfriend, I'm in a polyamory relationship, Mm -hmm. and you have to, you know, you, you, well, you don't have to, but, you know, if you want to be with me, you're going to have to, you're going to have to understand my lifestyle. Did you have that kind of conversation and how did it, how did it turn out? Because uh, being a guy, you know, a guy would be like, yeah, I'm with that. But unfortunately, he won't be able to get none of to get with your girlfriend per se. Right. How how did that conversation go? Uh, we'll, we'll go off with a guy. Um, usually it's something that a person knows about me before I even get into a full blown conversation. Like, um, a lot of men, you know, that's one of the first things that they ask you when they try to spit game is, you know, are you single? No, I'm not single. I'm solo polyamorous. That's usually my response. So that's the initial thing. Um, and then from there, it's, it's like, oh, well, what is that? It means that I believe that you can love and be in love with more than one person at a time. Oh, okay, well, how that work? It means that right now I got three girlfriends, you know? So, and then they, oh, okay, that's cool. And then it's, you know, just more questions and I answer them because I don't have an issue with answering them. And then even from either from there, I either get um, the impression that they're usually probably going to either want to be in it for sex and think that I'm just this little freak that's going to do all this nasty stuff. Right. Or they thinking like, okay, well, I can't take her seriously because, you know, she got all these people that she's thinking about. She's not going to take me seriously. Or either they be with it and they down for it, even if it's something that they haven't tried before. Now, majority of the guys, majority of the guys, if you, you know, if this is an, an agreeable uh, account, they they sorely for for the sets. Would you agree with me? Yeah, I feel like um, I feel like 60, 60 to seventy percent of um, men are definitely trying to approach it for the sex of it all, um, and that's whether I was to say anything about polyamory or not. I think seventy percent of men think with the other portion of their body before they think about the other stuff. Exactly. Um, so yeah so I think whether I identify or say anything about me being polyamorous or having more than one girlfriend they're automatically you know got their mind on that anyway and I've had boyfriends over the years but none of my boyfriends have ever coincided with any of my girlfriends on a romantic level so it just because I have three girlfriends doesn't mean that I'm I'm trying to <laughs> share my girlfriends or, or have my my relationship with my girlfriend coincide with my relationship with my boyfriend. Would you, would, would you, all right, so let me get my thoughts together. All right, so with, with polyamory, it could be, it can be a mixture. It could be a guy and he can have two, uh, two females uh, in a polyamory relationship, or it could be a girl that can have a guy and a girl in a polyamory relationship, or it could be uh, a girl with two guys in a polyamory So let me break it down. Relationship. Go ahead. I'll break it down even better for you. So polyamory is simply loving more than one person at a time. So don't think of it as two guys, two anything, three, four, polyamory in general. Think of it as the umbrella. Polyamory simply means loving more than one person at a time and everybody agrees to it and is okay with it. Now, after that, then you break down. From there, you have polygamy. Polygamy is one person, one sex, male or female, and they have multiple partners of the same sex, male or female. So either a woman with multiple men or a man with multiple women. That is polygamy. Then from there, you have polygyny. Polygyny is a man with multiple women. Then you have Palandry. Palandry is a woman with multiple men. I and did. then you have solo polyamory, which is just an individual you. who chooses to have multiple part yeah, who chooses to have multiple partners, but they still live alone and um do, you know, all of their things by themselves. All right, all right, Missy. When when did you when when did you took it upon yourself to to actually bring what again? I'm from the old school, and usually, 
usually I, you know, I'm I'm from an era where you 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 just don't tell your business. Like you know, I, I'm 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 a, I, I keep stuff to the vest. I I don't need to I don't need to share it with the world or anything like that. But when when did you start it? Uh, started sharing uh in particularly on tiktok i hate tiktok i really do <laughs> but in particular with with tiktok when when did you decide to start uh sharing your lifestyle uh i guess when i decided to like literally come out about my lifestyle i decided to come out about my lifestyle probably about close to five years ago um, and when I decided to come out about it, I wasn't afraid to talk about it on any platform, whether it's walking down the road, whether it's talking on Instagram, tag, meet me, um, TikTok or whatever. I'm literally kind of new to TikTok. I'm just kind of getting on there in the last couple of months. But as far as like other platforms, I've been talking about my lifestyle for probably like the last openly probably for like the last um, at least five years. I think one of the main reasons why I chose to um really come out about my lifestyle is because I feel like if people are more open-minded about the way they choose to love each other, I think that we can kind of um, take away some of the childhood traumas and some of the things that we're going through because all of that, keeping things close to the vest and, you know, all this and that. Back in the day, the only reason why your grandma and your granddaddy, did, you know, you didn't know that they was unhappy is because there was no social media. Grandma was sleeping with the plumber and, grand and grandpa had two families down the road with babies in both houses. Right. You know right. what I mean? Like that's just being completely honest. But if there would have been honesty and there would have been truth in that situation where granddaddy was telling grandma, listen, I got this wife over here. Or I got these people over here that I can't live without. Then maybe we wouldn't have so many kids out here. that got fatherless homes or have, you know, motherless homes and all this and that and all these secret kids. I literally just had to go to my father's funeral two years ago. And I'm not even in, on my father's obituary and I'm, you know, one of five kids and only two of his kids made it in the obituary because my dad was a rolling stone and, and chose to have kids outside of his marriage. So I just chose to no longer be a secret. I'm, I don't want to be a secret child. I don't want to be, you know, anybody's secret. I don't want to be any of those things. And I choose to love the way that I want to love. And I feel like it isn't anybody's business to tell me that I'm wrong. So why should I have to hide it? All right. You say your daddy was a Rolling Stone. Was he a truck driver? Yeah. <laughs> no, he wasn't a truck driver. He Damn. just was doing too much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, you say you went, you, you know, my, my condolences to you. Um, you you said a couple of years ago. So you was you close to your father or no? You said was I close to my father? Yes. Um, I was not able to be as close to my father as I wanted to be, um, mostly due to the fact that he was trying to hide, you know, not necessarily hide me, but just hide from society that he had outside kids. You know, my father was a stand up guy when, you know, when we went to my father's funeral, you know, most of the people that were from his workforce and everything, because he was a police officer, a retired police officer, most of those police officers and everybody that was there didn't even know that he had outside kids outside of his marriage. Now you talking so about now you talking about they're looking at us crazy. You 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 talking about outside kids. So you was the outside kid. He was already I was married. The outside kid. Yes, my father was married when he um when he conceived me and when he conceived my younger sister with my mother. Okay. Oh okay, 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 okay. I got you. I got you. I got you. All right, all right. So, so yeah, my and then even at my father's funeral, he had, it, there was a mistress on the back row. So it's like, and, and I don't think that there was like no love in there. I know that my father loved my mother. I know that my father loved the mistress that was in the back of the, you know, in the back of the funeral. And I know that in some way, shape, or form, he also loved his wife because he chose his wife over his kids. So if there was so much love, why we couldn't just be honest, you know what I mean, and live our truth, so that that way our kids can be raised as a village and be raised as a tribe. Instead of having to be put against each other and being told like, oh, no, that's not your sister because y'all ain't got the same mom and that's not your sister and you got to choose your mom over your sister and things like that. I just see so much pain and so much hurt and so much, you know, division in our community and in our in, in society in general that can really be healed by love. And I think that polyamory is, is a way of love. It's a way of, you know, being honest with yourself. 
there's so many men out here that, you know, have a woman that they lay down with every night and call it, call their wife and their girlfriend. But yet they got a woman around the corner that they feel just as strongly about. Would so that woman is a secret. That woman can't, you know, can't go out the door and say, oh, this is my, this is my man. And, this, and I love this man too. Would it be, would, would it be, uh, like you, you find, uh, your significant other, the, 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 the bond between you guys is strong. You decide to get married. Would, would you still, uh, would you still want a polyamory relationship even when you get married? One of my girlfriends just got married to a gentleman. He's a, a nice guy and she's still my girlfriend. Okay, okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. But what so, about you, I mean, though? What about you? Now, okay, I was gonna say, me answering for myself. I guess that would depend on who my partner ends up being. I can, I can honestly say, I say, you know, to anybody, you know, when they say, well, how do you identify? I identify as a solo polyamorous, polyamorous person right now at this point in my journey. I will not say that ten years from now, five years from now, even a month from now, that that is how I will still identify. I mean, who's to say? I don't know. Whatever the universe or God has for me is for me. I'm not letting nothing pass me by that's meant for me. My, I'm, I'm open and I'm ready to receive whatever I'm meant to have. So if a woman walks into my life or if a man walks into my life and sweeps me off my feet to the point where I feel like nothing else on this earth matters except that one person, I may as well, I may go back to monogamy. I can't say that that's, that's a never, 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 that will never happen. But honestly, just the way that I have lived through life the way that I see people I don't see that many um happy monogamous couples like to be completely honest the, the most happiest so-called happiest monogamous couples there's a cheating man in the background and there's a, a woman on the side that's keeping that man happy facts and maybe that's not every case but it's, it's about at least 75 percent of them all right all right so you or say, there's a you know or there's a woman on the side keeping that other woman happy or a man on the side keeping her happy like I'm not saying there's always a man that's you know stepping out I, I don't want to put out that that narrative but in general there's like multiple people that's still helping that situation even if it's a work wife at your job you like I said polyamory is not about sex so a lot of people are polyamorous and don't even realize that they're polyamorous if we just go by the definition of poly of, of polyamory which is loving more than one person with everyone's consent. Because if you got a wife at home, but your wife knows that you got a work wife at work, but it's a joke, you know what I mean? Like you're not sleeping with the lady. The lady just nice to you at work. She may y'all might share food or something and just spend lunch breaks together. That's still a relationship that you have with that you have with that woman. That's still a connection. That's still energy that's flowing between the two of you guys. You're sharing a meal. You're sharing time together. You're sharing concerns together. You're sharing care for each other. That's still a relationship. That is what polyamory is. Okay. okay. That's a simplified definition of polyamory. People automatically just want to make it into this big thing because they're adding on sex. Take the sex away from it. Everybody's polyamorous. There you go. All right. So let, now let me ask you this. The, does polyamory, po, po, I can't pronounce it. Po, <laughs> does poly, can poly coincide with the uh, with the community, the, the LBGQT community? Definitely. There's a lot of, um, of polyamorous people in the LGBTQ um, um, community definitely. I meet lesbians all the time that are polyamorous. I have um a couple in my inbox right now that want me to date them and their partners. I mean, my my two main girlfriends, um, they well, uh, they're, they're I feel like they're bisexual, but they really only identify with men on a sexual level. They don't want to be in a relationship with a man. They, um, I think they have like a, a boyfriend that they share, but they only it's it's purely like a sexual relationship. It's not even anything romantically involved. So they honestly mostly identifies lesbians and yes they're polyamorous <laughs> okay okay so down down in florida you 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 said you was born and raised up in new york did did, did you come down to florida yourself or did did the family come down to florida um you mean like with me being raised mostly here yeah Oh, okay. So, yeah, I, I had um, other circumstances. Um, I'm adopted. My biological mother was an addict. And um, so, yeah, I was originally born in New York and was with my mother. But I had to move to Florida because my mother couldn't take care of me. Okay. And then by the time I was 12, my mother was mur my biological mother was murdered. Oh, sorry, man. God damn it, man. Just throw that at me. 
Damn. Okay. Well, I'm sorry to hear um, my condolences for for that too. So, okay, I, yeah, I'm I'm good. I'm I'm a warrior. I've had a hard knock life, but you know, God is good. Wow. So, was you what you was down in Florida when that happened to your mother? How how did you find out? Oh, let's not go into those questions. Uh, okay. Let's keep it, let's okay. Keep it oh, okay. 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 All right. Well, Florida. Um, how has how has Florida been treating you? Like, I mean, you're 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 good down here. You you got. Uh, I'm I'm yeah, I'm, I'm, assume, I'm, assume, I'm assuming I'm assuming I'm you got a job down here. So, what do you do for a living? Oh yeah, I um I work for a black owned telecommunications company um and i work as a customer service manager i have my own customer service team that does all of our customer service calls for um the company that i work for and i'm also a licensed hairstylist so when i'm not working for the telecommunications company i am traveling and doing hair i mostly specialize in locks and in color okay definitely i see i I see the color uh in your in your own hair so i definitely see <laughs> yeah that. uh man okay okay you, you, you now you already said this is a telecommunications company you're 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 not a you, you're not a bill collector are you because if you are i am not I'm, a bill collector. okay so i make telecommunications company so i work <laughs> for like a phone company so like um the company um, it is a black-owned phone company, so we do um, specialize in providing cellular service to um, everyday people, and we also specialize in um, providing cellular service and internet service to, or Wi-Fi service rather, to companies and corporations and things of that nature as well. Oh, so I got the like hookup. <laughs> it's like a run of the mill, like you know, any other um, cell phone company. Okay, I got the hookup. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Missy, man, thank you very much. I, I really do appreciate it. You you really gave me um gave me a good light on on polyamorous uh situation. Well, hopefully, I made you view it from a different that's not so um sexual and not so overly masculine because I think that the poly um the poly society right now is very diluted by over masculine men who are really trying to take it over with this oh it got to be a man and a bunch of women type of situation when um women are, are are free out here we're free we're independent we're living our best lives and not necessarily out here trying to be you know hoish or thottish or any of that other stuff we're simply just trying to do what's best for us and sometimes what's best for us maybe more than one king that's what's up that's what's up that's what's up well, definitely go ahead and uh, shout out your 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 TikTok. Oh yes, yeah. so it is Miss Solo Polly Missy. Run that by me again. <laughs> <laughs> it's Miss Solo Polly Missy. There you go, Miss Solo Polly Missy, y'all. I really, really enjoyed myself this evening, man. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to have a conversation with you. That's what we do over here on the Lockout Men Podcast Show. The best conversation starts here on the Lockout Men Podcast Show. Miss Solo, Hello, Polly, Missy. <laughs> Missy, thank you very much for com- I mean, for conversating with me this evening, man. And yo, yo, hey, you live live your best life, man. I mean, that's that's all I can that that's all I can say. Oh, no problem at all. Thanks for having me. You're very welcome, ma'am. You have a good night, and we will chop it up again. Definitely, no problem. All right. Good night. All right. Hey, uh, all right. So, Missy, I'm about to send you my uh I'm about to send you a text of uh uh Uh, I'm about to send you another text. It will say, you know, thank, you know, a thank you text and all that good stuff. Um, I would need a, you know, like a little description of yourself, a couple of photos, uh, a suggestion, a title suggestion for the, you know, for the episode and your email. So I will send all that to you as soon as you hang up. 
All right. No All right. I'll holler at you later, man. And stay safe out there. All right. Thank you. Bye.